Hi, Rocky here from Maker Adventures. Um, so, gonna do kind of a multiple part video on a solar install. It's a 2001 Taximantis. So it, it does not support lithium and that's kind of what we're gonna look at today. So the factory control panel, which is right down here. Most of you are probably all familiar with where that's at. It's got your fuses in it and your breakers. Um, the 2021 models and older were not compatible with lithium. So I actually reached out to Taxa and they were able to give me the new control panel part number that supports lithium um, so you can have your batteries fully charged. So we're going to do kind of a little bit of video, a little bit of photos and let you know how the process is. But this is the new one right here that's going to be going in. Looks almost identical, just uh, different part numbers. Looks like we'll have to swap over some of the fuses and pop open some of the area here for installing our breakers in. So I'm gonna take this one apart, see what we need to do for installing that one. And let's get to it. All right, so have the cover off of both units, new and old. Um, just wanna also touch base on note is, I'm comfortable doing this, I have 20 years in the field as a mechanic um so for those of you that probably shouldn't be doing this install um take it to the dealer or an rv shop or anything like that that could do this for you so important steps obviously i'm i'm disconnecting my 12 volt power with our battery cutoff switch here and then i'm completely unplugged from shore power outside so right now everything is dead in the trailer um, now I'm going to bring the panel out, um, key points. If you are, you know, able to do this yourself or feel comfortable, take a picture of how the wiring goes to all the breakers and I can show you that. But basically what that's going to do is it's going to make it a lot easier when you go back to get that all, um, put in correctly. So you can see basically would snap a picture of that to see where my grounds and my comments and my powers are all going. So we'll pull that out, check our 12 volt, make sure everything gets wired back in properly. And as you can see, probably sneak peek here. There's my Renogy battery monitor system. And I've got two, two 100 amp hour lithium batteries down here. And next video, I'm gonna figure out where I'm cramming my inverter and my charge controller for solar. So, get back at it and pull this thing out. All right, so panels out. Um, to me, pretty self-explanatory. Um, our, our 110 power is coming in here. So this is um, where you plug in on the outside of your trailer. It's gonna come in down here. And then you can see the yellow wiring going back out is gonna run to your two different plugs that you have in here, your 110 plugs. So the one right underneath the counter and then the one kind of in the hidden cubby back over there by your uh, bed. So the 12 volt just has uh, some butt connectors that wire everything in. So that's pretty simple on the new one. It's got the same color code. So everything is color code in here, which is nice. Uh, everything matches up. So we're going to probably, I'm going to put the other panel up top here and one by one go through and rewire in all the 12 volt connections. So you will need some wire crimping tools, some buck connectors, um, some zip ties. I'm probably gonna tie this up a little neater than what it was when it came out, but basic hand tools, uh, screwdrivers so far to just kind of take this thing apart and put it back together again. Looks like the only side you're gonna have to get into is over here where your breakers are. So not too in depth. The full converter inverter setup is kind of all self-contained over here. And that wiring is actually already hooked up in the proper spot on the new one. So I'll show you that once we start putting everything in, but I'm just gonna one by one, get the 12 volt wiring all set up 
and then we'll move on to the 110. So got all of our 12 volt wires disconnected from the old panel and what you probably didn't see through the, the sped up version here is the yellow wire um, that feeds back in I believe it goes over to the lighting and water pump panel and feeds power to that with your heater controls and everything. Um, the wire is real short. So it does have a pigtail back there that just kind of disconnects. So what I did is I just I cut this end off and I added it to the new controller. Obviously once I get this put in I can tie it up so it's not hanging out of the way. But it gives me a little bit of space so if I want to take this controller out for some reason um, and let it hang down here to inspect anything, uh, I won't be pulling that wire out every time. So a little trick there. All right, so got the box out. Um, obviously dealing with wiring for 110, the, the wire and cables themselves are a lot more rigid, so it's not quite as easy to pull things apart. So just be aware of that. Uh, what I found was easy is disconnecting at each breaker, each um, panel, the ground and the common, and then pulling it out as a unit once all the wiring was straight. I'm gonna feed it in the same way um, and then what I'm going to do is probably hook up the breaker side first, then secure the breaker in here. It'll work out a little bit better. So I'm going to pop this out and swap out some fuses, get that into the new panel that we have up there and start getting this stuff hooked up. All right. So it's all in, bolted down. All my wire connections are tight. Um, I double checked my pictures that I took before to match up and make sure that everything's in there correctly. Um, the next thing I need to do is swap out fuses, which is pretty simple. Oh, I'm just going to follow from the top down. Sometimes it takes a little push to get them in there the first time. Which is never a bad thing. So in case any of you are wondering, because obviously I'm on camera, off camera, but uh, it's probably been about a couple hour process. Now we are here in the background, but um, we live in the trailer full time, so we were actually out and it took me a couple hours to get it all set up and put in, but that also goes along with, um, you know, filming and, and stopping for that type of stuff. Um, you know, grabbing tools that I need in and out of the truck that we keep with us. Fortunately, I. I do carry quite a bit around just because, like I said, I'm, a, I'm 20 years as a mechanic. Um, but uh, yeah, not too bad of an install. I think that anybody who has some minor electrical experience could handle this pretty easily. Um, I'll pop the cover off there and get that fuse that I dropped it back in, but get that fuse plugged in there and then we'll be ready to plug it in, turn the power on, make sure everything's working properly. Cool. All right, I had to switch. Uh, quick switch on the GoPros there with no power in the trailer I was running off one of them and uh, battery died so got the new one on 
like I said, we got uh, battery power on, so we're going to start going through the breakers and make sure that uh, things are cycling on. So I guess, for instance, we will... I'm going to plug in one of the GoPros so you can see if this powers up. Turn the main on, which is our 30 amp. Our 115 amp plug. Our second 15 amp plug. Just got the uh, AC unit just cycled on and here's the inverter converter. And our fans moving. And good news is um, we're charging. So um, fired up, it's charging. This is the new model. So it's supposed to um, be able to get the lithium batteries up to basically 100%. Uh, hopefully a lot better than 60, 65%, which I've been rolling at. So pretty, pretty reasonable install for anybody that's interested. Um, I will throw stuff in the link to this video for obviously the part number, right? You're probably going to want to know that the most. Uh, I did purchase this off Amazon, so they do have it. And to be honest with you, I looked around at a few websites and Amazon was the cheapest price. There was another RV trailer um, website that did sell it for the same price, but uh, there's just something about Amazon's customer service. If you have problems, I've been able to return stuff very easily. So, um, best price, good customer service. So, bought that there. Just got to get the um, panel on, and I've got to take a couple of these knockouts out of here so that it fits across those panels. I, I'm pretty sure you got to take them all out. I guess if you guys have any questions, you know, throw some some comments. I hope you like the video. And like I said, I'm doing a full solar install. So the next is where I'm going to mount the inverter. Um, I have an idea where I'm going to mount my charge controller. I'm not super thrilled about it because it's all the way in the back underneath stuff. But there's a lot of space and it'll be able to vent. So, yeah, this is kind of step one getting these batteries so that they can charge up properly. All right, see you guys in the next one.